Tamara. Good to have you with Faces of Armenia. Likewise, I'm happy to be here. So maybe can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, I'm from Sydney, Australia. I came here in October to, of course, volunteer with Birthright. Um, it was my first trip to Armenia, actually. I have traveled a lot, um, but not yet to Armenia, which I thought I wanted to come here on a more, I guess, on a mission. Back home, I worked in tourism mm -hmm. and I really loved it because I love traveling. And I was an assistant manager for a touring company mm -hmm. um, for Sydney Day Tours. Yeah, so in Sydney. Yes, yes, I live in Sydney. Um, and I like being outdoors. I love the ocean. I like trees. I like bushwalking. Um, I love dancing. I'm a bit crazy. <laughs> um, but So you, you have your very much Sydney mentality, but also by heritage you are Armenian. I am, yes. How do you feel Armenian in Sydney? Well, that's a tough question. So as you know about, there is the unfortunate genocide. Mm -hmm. A lot of Armenians were displaced. So my great grandparents eventually settled in Beirut in Lebanon. Um, so I had been there twice. And to me, I was like, that's what I think of when I think I'm Armenian. I, I go to Lebanon, oh, okay. you know, and living in a place like Sydney or well, Australia, I mean, there aren't There are Armenians, there's a mm -hmm. huge Armenian population, but not the way there is in, for example, LA or Russia, for example, right? So I have a very interesting question then. Do you connect with other Armenians in Sydney or you just live your life? Some, because? some I do. I have a couple of Armenian friends. All my parents' friends are Armenian, um, but I, I felt a disconnection. I didn't feel connected to Armenia as a country. Um, so when I heard about birthright, I was like, this is, this sounds really good. This sounds like I will, my, my questions will be answered, you okay. know? But you, you shed light on a very interesting phenomenon, um, which I call assimilation. Mm -hmm. What do you think, what happens to the Armenian diaspora if they will not visit the motherland? If you will get children, they will not be exposed to Armenia. Like, how do you think the connection will evolve between motherland mm. and diaspora? I think it's more of like a rite of passage, you know, um, because a lot of youth, like myself, whose parents have come from either Lebanon, Iran, wherever it may be, they always come here at some point in their lives. So I think it will never... I don't know. I think the difference with Armenians and different races mm -hmm. is that Armenians feel like more, what's the word? I don't want to say proud or patriotic, but like there's, it's different. Like when I speak to like my Lebanese friends or my oh. Italian friends, for example, they don't have a sense of like their language. They don't, they're not as their culture, whereas Armenians always find each other. Armenians, or wherever you go in the world, an Armenian will recognize another Armenian. So do you know do what you I mean? Think, yeah, like it's interesting. Of course, there was this big genocide that yes. somehow connects Armenian also. The, yes, the, it does. The vehicle of the shared it is, pain. It does, yep. And Absolutely. so do you think that's really, that's the way how others connect and say, we have a shared past, so let's say... Yeah strong together like I'll, I'll even like for example i was in lisbon last year mm -hmm. okay and there was this group of armenian ladies and a tour guide holding an armenian flag mm -hmm. and these women saw me like i just looked at them and i was like oh that's really that's really cute and they three ladies just approached me <laughs> and they knew i was armenian like what other race is like that no <laughs> other race is like that and that's what i really find special and unique about us is that we find each other wherever we are in the world. We somehow connect and find each other because we're not that big, like well, there's not that many of us. Whereas other cultures, there's more of them. There's more Lebanese people in the world. There's more Italians in the world, whereas our population is not that large. So wherever you are, you find each other. And it's like, oh, you're Armenian. Oh, me too. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Like it's, it's, it's special. It's really, it's then, really special. Then it, it, it really ties back into this generational discussion. So I want to understand how do you act differently from your parents or your grandparents? Okay. Is it, is it a clear divide? Yes, it is. Absolutely. I live in Australia. So 
at my workplace, I'm I'm not I'm speaking English. When I go socializing, I'm speaking English. Like it's it's going to be different because again, as you said, generational. Like I've been exposed to more different things than my parents would have, or they only know what they grew up with. Whereas I live in a multicultural society, so I see different cultures. I learn about different cultures. So I I take bits and pieces of those that I like mm -hmm. so I, I I'm I feel like I'm more of like this eclectic person than just Armenian because I've been exposed to a more diverse society does that and make so sense to speak uh, a patchwork citizens with Armenian roots yes so you recently mentioned that you came to Armenia but can you describe a little bit about the process that made you curious to travel or understand where you came from, where your grandparents yeah. came from? Well, I was always going to make this trip at some point, um, but I heard about this program, this organization called Birthright mm -hmm. Armenia um, on Facebook, actually, and it was like videos of people's experiences. And what is Birthright? Just to... uh, So it's this organization that gives the opportunity of young Armenians in the diaspora to come here and volunteer for as long as they like. Um, so I came and I, and I applied. So I only just applied this year, couple, mm -hmm. like halfway through the year. And it's this process and then you get accepted or not. And then um, you book your flights and, and then you, you come here. So I, when, I, when I thought about applying, I was like, this is, this is the way I'd like to see Armenia mm -hmm. as a local. I don't want to just come like everyone else does. I mean, not that that's bad. I'm not mm -hmm. like, there's no right or wrong. But for me personally, because I felt a disconnection, I thought, why don't I do something positive or do something active about it mm -hmm. rather than just be a tourist or a travel? I don't like to call myself a tourist, like a traveler. Yeah. <laughs> so when I came, so yeah, so I came with Birthright. So I've been here for like two months mm -hmm. um, and it's been a journey. It's definitely been a journey. But tell me about back in Sydney, you are, oh, I have my flight in one week. It's actually going to what I was always yes. dreaming of. What were your expectations then? I tried to not have any because so that's, like, that leads to disappointment. Just another country? It was, no, no, it was, I knew it would be different because first of all, I've heard so many things, but, mm -hmm. and I tried not to let that deter me or change my perspective mm. or give me expectations. Okay, but that means you had a perspective because you said not change my perspective. True. <laughs> it's, it's, but the thing is though, it's when human, like it's normal, it's unconscious, okay, but right? but your perspective. Um, I don't know, like, because it's not the Armenian I know, right? Because coming from a Lebanese Armenian family, it's like our food is different, our t dialect, the way we talk, mm. the slang words we use, mm. um, a lot of it, and like, It's different. It's so different, you know. But coming here, being here, meeting people, um, finding a connection with locals, a lot of local people, um, has made this experience really special. So the people of this country. So maybe can you describe your first week coming here? Oh, it was What tough. Was... It was tough. Okay, yes. uh, now, now you make us curious. Yes. <laughs> um, I like, like, I'm... Okay, when I travel, I travel places that I love culture shock. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love being out of my comfort zone. Um, but when I first got here, um, it was tough. Like, it was different. It was a lot. Of, it was really, um, really overwhelming. Um, I also had expectations of myself. I was like, okay, you're going to do this. You're going to feel this. You're going to blah, blah, blah. But it's like, no, step back and observe, you know, and just take it one day at a time. Because... Again, coming here, living here is different than being a traveler, you know? Mm -hmm. It's different. Every day you're doing this, you're going here, you're eating this. You're, like, it's not living life. You're, I'm at, you know, by being with birthright, you're living in the country. So you're experiencing the struggles. And, you know, everyone has issues as well. So coming as well with my own things in my head, um, it's overwhelming. But it's been a really... Okay, but what specifically is overwhelming? Um, I think the weather is one of the things. Ah, okay. So you I live arrived in, in the summer? No, I arrived in the autumn. Ah, okay. okay. Yes. And I'm not used to cold like this. So it's really different. It was really, it was really hard to adjust. I feel like I'm adjusted now, sort of. Mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's 
very it's very different I've um, I definitely struggled <laughs> when I first arrived a few days after I went to another I wasn't in Yerevan I was in a town a city the second largest city called Gumri okay. so I guess it's very different to Yerevan it's two hours away sure but it's a completely different place um, it's quite backward in the in customs and things haven't progressed as Yerevan as Yerevan is um, so in that sense, it was um, more, I guess, a bit of a struggle. Um, and I guess the people as well are amazing, but again, really backward. More um, provincial. Yes, yes. But the, the beauty of Gumri was that I met and came across amazing people who had this vision for their city and they were so proud of it. And they were like educated people. They were really progressive um, but they loved where they lived. And for me, that was really inspiring. For me, it was like, that's amazing. Like considering the way you think and the environment you live in, it's like, it's, it made me kind of grateful, really, really grateful. And also, um, being in Gumri taught me how to be less, I guess, not judgmental, but kind of try and understand people more. I mean, I always thought I was a un really understanding person, but I feel more understanding. I feel more less, I guess, because in Gumri, people are very interested in you. Mm -hmm. They will ask you questions. So do you think <clears> it's <throat> because you're Armenian, because you can speak with them in Armenian? Perhaps. I'm, I'm sure that was a like mm -hmm. a bone, an advantage for me, um, but they still knew I was not from there. I don't know, the way I walk, the way I talk, the way I dress, you know, they can tell that you're not from there, which is amazing. Um, but a lot of others I spoke to would get offended or would be upset, but I was kind of like, no, why would I be upset? They're not, they don't mean harm. They're just interested in who you are. Yes. And I think that's really special about Armenians uh, in Armenia is that they're always like, who is this person? What are you doing here? They want to know. It's a curious society. Yes, very curious. And it's, but it's it's not it doesn't come from a bad place. It comes from a I'm interested. Like I'm I just want to know. That's all. Yeah, I see. You know that goes back to the Armenian excellence and engineering yeah. in engineering the south. Yeah. Area. Yes. Yes. And I mean it's one of the oldest uh, continuously inhabited uh, yeah. um, plateaus or region in the entire world. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And a really resilient bunch of people and welcoming and hospitable. So I think that's been one of the greatest things I've experienced being here is the people, you know, so. So now um, I actually have a question. You as a diasporan, you have likely heard of the Velvet Revolution, mm -hmm. of the Four Day War in 2016 mm -hmm. and Nakarabakh, yep. etc. Yep. What do you see? How did you experience this uh, shift of mindset, uh, this new era as a diasporan? Well, to be honest, um, I, when I did go to Artsakh for mm. four days for a trip that we had and I saw the reality that it's real, like anything can happen any day. And I guess seeing posts on Facebook or reading the news um, never really reveals the true reality of what it's like or the energy or... Um, I guess the reality of the situation and I think by being here talking to locals whether it was in Gumri or in Artsakh um, it's it's a real reality it's a constant I guess situation it's not hasn't ended I felt deeply about it I felt um, I actually kind of felt tough. emotional yes really yeah. emotional about it can you share one distinct unique favorable or positive quality that will help Armenians steer towards a prosperous future? I think that the characteristic um, of them being so hospitable, mm -hmm. I know it sounds really like small, but mm -hmm. it's actually a big thing. And I think um, especially Yerevan becoming um, a really touristic place. Mm -hmm. I, I have, um, I think that Armenia is going to become somewhere that people want to visit. And I know I'm, I'm looking at a more like touristic kind of perspective, 
But I think people will come here and they will love the people. They will love the landscape. There's so much in this country. There is so much to see and there's so much for people to appreciate. And I think, and I, I really think that in the next like five or 10 years, um, Armenia will become like a go-to place, you know? It won't just be, I mean, I know a lot of people are going to Georgia, but people will know about Armenia because now a lot of the times in Australia, people are like, sorry, what, where's that? Where's Armenia? <laughs> Romania? And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> Armenia. So I think we will become a country that people will recognize. So I think that good things are going to happen to Armenia. I think Armenia will really, it's going to take time, of course, as all things do. But I think there's the right people um, who are wanting and willing to make a, make a difference and make this country, I guess, prosperous. On that note, I have to say thank you for your insights. I think you no are problem. a wonderful asset for Armenians, both locally and globally. And uh, thanks for being part of Faces of, of course. Armenia. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks.